Welcome to the 113th episode of the Ask Dr. Khan Show. I'm Dr. Peter Khan, functional medicine practitioner, and today is another episode where we're going to talk about the immune system and the gut. So I'm really excited. Uh, just came back from Guatemala this past week on an eight-day mission trip where we help uh, children in Guatemala and families help them build stoves that are highly efficient. See, these people, they cook over open flames in their homes, and the smoke circulates, cause a lot of health problems. It also is terribly inefficient. Basically, it's like setting up a campfire inside your house. How would you like to have a campfire inside your kitchen where it's enclosed and the smoke doesn't go anywhere? It's just not a good thing. It also is a major environmental problem where it causes deforestation because they have to chop up so much wood. So we go and install these stoves that use 70% less firewood and also funnels all the smoke out of the house. So that's great. It help, really helps them. And we'll also do uh, vacation Bible study, uh, you know, do song and music with the kids. So it's a great experience. I brought my two older kids with me and uh, it's just a, a great time in Guatemala. So I'm really grateful and thankful that I get the opportunity to go. And also for many of you, I actually, right before last week, I was at the Gluten-Free Expo. So for those of you that were local to Arizona, if uh, you're watching me for the first time on the Ask Dr. Khan Show, welcome to the show. Uh, if you met me at the Gluten-Free Expo uh, two weekends ago, it's great to see you here again on the Ask Dr. Khan Show. Every Monday at 12.30, we'll put out content that's going to help you get well and stay well. And for those of you at the Gluten-Free Expo who saw me and also uh, made an appointment for a case review, I really look forward to meeting each and every one of you. I'll be sending out personalized email or video to you to kind of let you know what to expect coming up. So again, excited for all the opportunities that I got to meet so many wonderful people in at the Gluten-Free Expo in Glendale, Arizona. And uh, we had over 100 and some people attending my portion of the presentation and uh, made a, a lot of appointments, which were donating 100% of the proceeds from that event to Operation Homefront, which is gonna support veterans, okay? So awesome, so now we're caught up. I'm back in town, so today we're gonna talk about leaky gut and food sensitivity. This is a topic that I discuss at the Gluten-Free Expo, and it was one of the very common questions that I have. Obviously, at the Gluten-Free Ex gluten Expo, many people there are there because they're looking at gluten-free options because they've been told that they have a you know, problem with gluten sensitivity issue or they have celiac disease, they have autoimmune disease. They're looking at options to try to eat healthier, to try to help them to, with their condition. So gluten-free is a very popular thing and the problem is, I think most people misunderstand what that really is. So I'm going to talk about how leaky gut, I'm going to talk about leaky gut today, and food sensitivity. And most people think leaky gut or food sensitivity, let's just even put autoimmune disease, celiac disease. Sorry, this whiteboard is uh, on the last leg, it needs help. But celiac disease, which is an autoimmune disease, this is an autoimmune disease, where the immune system is attacking the small intestine, the microvilli, and so it's attacking the intestine, causing you to have malabsorption. So celiac disease is you know, considered a GI problem. Right? You go to your gastroenterologist, GI specialist, to get diagnosed with celiac disease, they do biopsy of your small intestinal tract to see if you have villus atrophy. So it's considered a GI problem. It's an autoimmune disease. And you have food sensitivity, which people think, you know, food sensitivity versus food allergies. But both of these, because it's related to food, we think of them as gastrointestinal problems. And then we have leaky gut. It's got the word gut in it. Leaky gut syndrome we think of it as a gut issue. What I'm going to tell you on today's episode is that leaky gut, food sensitivity, and even celiac disease, none of these are GI problems. None of these are gastrointestinal problems. None of these problems are problem with your tummy or your intestine. All of these are problem with your immune system. Leaky gut is not a gastrointestinal problem, it's an immune system problem. Food sensitivity and food allergy is not a 
tummy problem, it's an immune system problem. Celiac disease is not a disease of your gastrointestinal tract or your intestine. It is an immune system problem. All of these things are immune system challenges. Now, if this is new to you, you're like, wow, what does it mean by that? I thought celiac disease, you know, it's in my, if you've been diagnosed with celiac, you know, you go to your GI doc, so you think it's a GI disease, gastrointestinal disease. If you have food sensitivity, you think it's because you eat something, your tummy, your intestine is reacting to the food. If you have leaky gut, you think it's a gut issue. But none of these are gut issues, they're immune system problems. If you really think about it, when you eat something and you react to it, is it your tummy that's reacting to the food, or is it your immune system that's reacting to the food? Right? It's your immune system that's reacting to the food. Now, it's your immune system that's reacting to food in your intestinal tract, but it's still, it's an immune system-mediated response. Why is that important to know? Because you have to separate the fact from the fiction. You've got to understand it's an immune system response. So what that means is not necessarily a dose-dependent response. Those dependent means that, hey, the more you eat something that's bad for you, the worse it is, the worse your symptom will be. Well, when you understand it's immune system response, it's not necessarily a dose dependent response anymore. What that means is you can eat just a tiny little bit and flare up your immune system just the same. So a lot of people with celiac disease, right? or not what, everyone with celiac disease, if you have been diagnosed, that you're told that you have celiac disease, you're told to go on a gluten-free diet, right? They say gluten-free, gluten-free. Nobody in their right mind would tell somebody with celiac disease to eat a gluten-reduced diet. Have you ever heard of a gluten-reduced food? versus a gluten-free food, right? You always see the food label as gluten-free, not less gluten in this food. Why is that important? Because celiac disease is an immune system problem, meaning that your immune system can detect pathogen the size of virus and bacteria. How small are those things? Right, small, microscopic. So it doesn't take very much for your immune system to pick up the fact that there's something that's gonna be a, a problem for your body. In the case of celiac disease, those people with celiac disease, your body is seeing gluten as a pathogen, as a foreign invader. It's a mountain and immune system attack, and it doesn't take very much for it to do so. So you must be gluten-free when you have celiac disease. You cannot just be gluten-free 90% of the time. It doesn't work, because that 10% can cause you to have complete flare-up of your celiac disease to where at the point you you never get better. So same thing applies though to these other aspects, meaning if you have food sensitivity or food allergies, if you eat that food, you're gonna create a response. Now, sometimes though, when you eat something, you may not have symptoms because there's a threshold. So what happens is the threshold may be right here where you are developing symptoms, threshold for symptom. So you may eat a food that you're sensitive to and you may develop a reaction. Here's reaction on this side. So you, as your reaction builds up, it's below the threshold. So you may not have symptom, but you're building up the reaction. And what happens is once you build up enough reaction above the threshold, that's when you experience symptom here. The symptom could be brain fog, could be joint pain, could be... Uh, fatigue, it could be, could be gas and bloating, could be GI symptoms, but most of the time, food sensitivity reaction is actually more neurological. Food allergy symptoms can be neurological, could be respiratory, could be skin, right? Eczema, hives breaking out. But either case, food sensitivity and food allergy response are not tummy issues. They're immune system problems. That's why if you have someone with a peanut allergy and they eat peanut, the throat shuts down. Well, that's not necessarily a tummy problem. Is because as the protein is being absorbed into your system, the peanut protein, your immune system in your blood is reacting against that peanut protein, 
causing respiratory, respiratory distress. So understand that food sensitivity and food allergy issues are not GI problems, they're immune system problems. So what that means is you cannot see it as a dose-dependent response, meaning it's not like, oh, if I just eat a little bit, I, it won't hurt me. If I eat a lot, then it will hurt me. Although you can experience symptom at this threshold level, but you're building up reaction. And the way the reaction builds up is cumulative. So what that means is each time you eat this food, you're building up more and more reaction, and then one day you feel bad, but you already have this reaction built up all this level, and now for you to get completely better, you may have to get yourself down to this level for you to start for the symptom to subside. So what that means is, you, if you have challenges, you must eliminate these food for a period of time completely for your immune system to calm down because it's an immune system issue. Okay, so you can't just like, well, let me just cut out gluten for a week. No, it's not long enough. Research show that if you have celiac disease and your gluten is a trigger for you, one single exposure of gluten can trigger an autoimmune flare-up for up to six to nine months. Eating gluten one time can trigger someone with celiac disease to have autoimmune flare-up to six to nine months by eating it one time. And this applies to other people as well. That's not celiac. Other people with autoimmune disease, like Hashimoto's, that have gluten sensitivity. Like other people with autoimmune disease that have sensitive to not just gluten, but potentially to dairy, to grains, and so forth. So this is important. Now, leaky gut. Again, people think leaky gut is because your gut is leaky. Your intestinal tract is leaky, which in some case, in, in some sense, that's true, okay? But that's really not an accurate way to describe it, even though structurally, when you have leaky gut, you may have intestinal issues. So let's illustrate this. So here's your intestinal tract like this, okay? These are the cells that line your intestinal tract. If we magnify this, we have the intestinal epithelial cells. Stand over here. And these are the epithelial cells that line your intestinal tract. So we're magnifying this one section here, right here. So these are the epithelial cells that line your intestinal tract, the space between it's called tight junction, and we may have different proteins that hold the cells together. That may be called the zonulin or a specialized protein that hold the cells together like a zipper. And what happens is, structurally speaking, you may have things that are irritating the gut lining, like a food that you're sensitive to, or a bacteria, like a gut infection, or some type of toxin that's irritating the gut lining, and now you're damaging, you're damaging these that these uh, tight junction proteins, and now the gap between the cells are wider, and these proteins are able to leak out, and that's called leaky gut. So structurally speaking, yes, it is happening in the intestinal tract, and there may be some damage here that's on a cellular or microscopic level. So when you have this leaky gut where this, the junction between two cells are damaged and it's leading them to open, this is happening on a cellular level, so you can't see it on an endoscopy or colonoscopy. So that's why you go to your gastrointestinal specialist, they do colonoscopy, endoscopy, those tests do not tell you whether you have leaky gut. It cannot, because colonoscopy, endoscopy are, they're macroscopic tests, right? They're gross eye exams, meaning they just look at it with a camera, but they can't see things on a microscopic level like leaky gut. So this is actually a, a, a condition that we have to use blood tests to measure antibodies attacking these tight junction proteins. So that's very sensitive without you know, resorting to you know, colonoscopy, endoscopy, and cameras to look at it, which are very, uh, basically you're looking at a gross anatomical exam. So this cannot be diagnosed necessarily from a medical test. You've got to do specialized tests to determine if you have a leaky gut. The point is, even though there's some structural issue, that's not really what leaky gut is. Because leaky gut happens when your immune system specialized white blood cells, cytokines, they start to attack this protein that's leaking out. Without this immune system attacking this dietary protein that's leaking out of the gut, there's no leaky gut. <laughs> leaky gut is an immune system reaction, so the immune system's reacting to the dietary protein that's leaking out, leading to the systemic inflammation. That's leaky gut. So understand that leaky gut is an immune system problem, and what happens is the inflammation that results from that goes systemically everywhere. And that's why you can have leaky gut and not have tummy trouble. The symptom of leaky gut could be just 
brain fog and fatigue and joint pain and hives, anything but tummy trouble. So if you're saying, well, my, my, I have an iron stomach, I can eat whatever, my stomach never hurt, but yet you have high blood pressure, you may have you know, heart disease, you may have skin problem, eczema, psoriasis, you may have brain fog and memory loss and can't focus that well, you have fatigue, you have thyroid problems, you have autoimmune disease that's developing, you may have leaky gut without having one iota of tummy, tummy symptoms. Okay, so don't think that just because your stomach doesn't hurt that you can't have leaky gut because it's an immune system problem, not a GI problem. Okay? So hopefully this helps you. And there's different ways that we can dampen this, depends on what's causing it. So if it's leaky gut, we must heal the gut. We also need to dampen the immune system flare-up. That's using certain nutrients. So vitamin D is very helpful in that. Glutathione is very helpful in that. And there's different compounds that we use to actually seal up the gut. So there's products that we use. So you can go to neurometabolicsupplements.com. I'll put the link to our online dispensary so you can look at these products that we have online. I have videos that explain how these things work for you so you can learn about it, okay? So we have different things we can do for that. As far as food sensitivity, if you're sensitive to multiple food, you're allergic to everything under the sun, typically it's not because you're allergic to everything or sensitive to everything, typically it's because you have leaky gut leading you to develop sensitivity to them. In fact, that's one way to know that whether you have leaky gut or not is do you react to multiple foods? If you do, most likely you may have leaky gut leading to the food sensitivity. So then the solution for food sensitivity is not to take a drug or allergy shots. The solution to food sensitivity is to heal leaky gut, which may involve cutting out the food that you're sensitive to for a period of time so you can reset this immune system response so your body calms down then your body will no longer react to the food provided we can heal the gut lining. For those with celiac disease or any autoimmune disease, concept is the same. You must find the underlying trigger. Now the trigger could be a food, right? In the case of celiac, it could be gluten. I'm going to tell you though, for a lot of people with celiac disease, I find gut infections to be very common. Bacterial infections, parasitic infections, those are other things that could be at play that's causing a celiac besides just gluten. Okay. And then for people with autoimmune disease, same thing. You've got to find that underlying trigger, which could be more than food. So everybody's really focused on food. Food is important. However, if you're, if you're eating clean, you're doing paleo, you're doing AIP, you're doing all these different diets, you're still having issues, it may be more than food. It may be an infection of some type. It may be a toxicity of some type that we may need to address. So that's where we come in. We do specialized testing to find out what are the underlying root causes so that you know exactly what you're supposed to eat, you know exactly what supplement you're supposed to take, and you know exactly how to detox these things from your system, and that's the program that we do. So if you need help with that, please give us a call, 480-988-6269, or you can private message us on Facebook, and we'll respond back to you. Please private message us with your email and your phone number so we can get back to you, or you can email info at askdrcon.com to get more information on how to get started with this. Again, hope this information helped you. If you found this helpful, you learned something new about these so-called GI problems, that they're not really a GI problem, but they're more immune system challenges. If you feel like you learned something that's new, or you already kind of know it, but I put it in a way that's more clear for you, that helps you understand it better, please like and share this video with other people, because this information is so important. There's so many people that need our help. And what we do, just straight up works. You can see over 120 video testimonials at askdrkhan.com. Check out these life-changing video testimonials because it's going to give you hope. It's going to let you know there are other options besides just medicine and, and, and medications and things that have side effects. So again, please like and share this video. And uh, if you haven't liked our page or follow our page, please do so because you're going to get notified of new content. We also have over 500 videos at our YouTube channel at DC. So these are different ways you can benefit from the education that we provide. If you need to take it another level to have one-on-one -on -one support, give us a call. We'll be more than happy to jump on the call and help you get started. So again, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week at the Ask Dr. Khan Show. Take care.